consultant. And my specialty is radiology. I specialise in breast cancer diagnosis. And, um, so um, we've got right up with 350 members that signed our declaration. So that's folk from all grades and all specialties and from right across the country. And so they signed the declaration. We all believe passionately that the NHS is best served with a yes vote. So you know, you know that the NHS has always been separate. There's no such thing as a UK NHS. It's always been separate. And the control was passed through the Scottish Parliament in 1999. And because we're separate, we've already got arrangements in place, like people being sent to, if we need to, to Great Ormond Street, or arrangements with organ transplants, that's not anything that's put at risk, because we already have separate arrangements, and those arrangements are in place. And we also punch our, above our weight in terms of research. We generate more than our population share, and the funding falls where the good research is happening. And Cancer Research UK has also said it would make absolutely no difference whatsoever to how the funding is allocated. So I don't think there are any risks from that point of view, but there are most definitely risks if we vote no, I think, about the NHS. And that's because of... There are, there are big risks, and that's because of the direction of travel that our NHS has been taken in. And the direction of travel that our NHS has been taken in is privatisation, and it's happening at a really fast rate. And that's because of the, the Health and Social Care Act of 2012 was passed. And what that does, which a lot of people don't know, is that it actually dismantles the 1948 Health Act. It removes the duty of the Secretary of State for Health to provide universal health care. It's no longer a legal duty. The NHS Act has been dismantled by this Health and Social Care Act. And so because of that, it's a really lengthy and technical document but it dismantles that act and also the services are forced to go out to private companies to bid for them. So, and they can also close services at will, shut hospitals and close down services. So you've got, for example, loads of services now being provided by private providers, GP services, out of our services, cancer services, um, screening services. And the biggest provider now of NHS, the second largest provider of NHS services in England is Richard Branson. And so effectively you just get an NHS logo and you slap it on top of an NHS service and that is what's happening in England. And over the past year, 70% of the contracts have, have gone out to tender, 70% of them have gone to private providers. So it's really fast tracking. And some people might think, well, okay, you know, the NHS is inefficient, let's get the private sector in. But basically what happens is they cherry pick the most profitable parts, the easy bits, and they're not interested in doing the intensive care unit, doing the difficult operations, and doing the patients that get chronic long-term conditions, because it's expensive. And basically, eventually, the private hospitals go bust, and they've also got very expensive private finance debts, which is like a really expensive mortgage. They go bust, and the private sector steps in. But... As well as that, standards also drop, so we've got reports of that now. Just one example is out of our services in Cornwall, GP services, they were criticised in a report which basically said that they had put in cost-saving measures, that they replaced call handlers with, replaced medical staff with call handlers who didn't have sufficient training, and as a result, the ambulance call-outs went up fourfold. And so, as well as that, you've got the cost to run the internal market. So billions of pounds are being run by the private sector, but the cost to run it in February this year was estimated at five billion pounds. Now that's an underestimate. That was like by a professor, Callum Payton and Keel. Five, pound, five billion pounds, if you put that in context, that is the entire staff cost for the Scottish NHS for one entire year. It's a massive amount of money, and it's an utter waste of money.
and it was cheap, second cheapest overall, but the one that was the most expensive and scored really badly in all these measures was the American system. And so, you've got to ask yourself, why is it then with all these things, all the evidence points to the fact that the private sector is not good for health care, if you look at the evidence, why is it that Westminster, each successive government, has taken us down this route? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. devolution alone. And I thought that the lady, if you watched the second television debate with 
um, Alistair Darling, Alex Salmon, the lady that spoke up about the NHS and said, I hope you, Mr Darling, can feel an iron bed and sitting on your shoulders. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Yeah. 